Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Last night, Virgin Orbit, amid a blaze of publicity, attempted to make the first orbital rocket launch from the UK. And that whole part is very much in quotes, because this is a US launch system, Launcher 1, carried on a, Vir on a Virgin Orbit 747 called Cosmic Girl. The rocket was built in the US, it was flown across the Atlantic in a you know, military transport plane, it was mated to a 747 which had been flown over there. It took off from Newquay in Cornwall, flew out over the Atlantic and was technically closer to Ireland, County Cork, when uh, it dropped the rocket and the rocket proceeded to head towards orbit. So this was definitely getting a lot of media attention because there hasn't really been any orbital launches from Western Europe, never mind the UK. The UK had a space program which it stupidly abandoned, but it launched all its rockets out of Australia. Um, there have been suborbital launches from various launch sites around Europe, but none are orbital launches yet. Uh, Spain, they launched uh, a Pegasus from Spanish soil. Again, it was an air-launched rocket, but it technically, it actually took off from the Canary Islands, which is technically part of Spain, but geographically it's part of Africa, so it's not Western Europe. And of course, Eastern Europe includes Russia, which includes Plisetsk, which is definitely a very active orbital launch site. Anyway, by now you have probably heard that this launch did not succeed. Yeah, the launch was called Start Me Up, is an homage of course to the Rolling Stones. Uh, Virgin likes to name all its launches after uh, records because Virgin Records is what really helped Virgin Group get started and become the behemoth that it is today. And yeah, Start Me Up, if you start me up I'll never stop, that's what our Mick Jagger said. Of course, the same song included the lyrics, uh, you make a grown man cry, and I expect there's a lot of uh, unhappy people after the launch failed. So the launch was carrying, uh, well, I think about, a, a, about over 10 satellites. There was one called Amber, which was built for the, um, built, let's see, built by Satellite Applications Catapult and Horizon Technologies, also built by Clyde Space from Scotland. They're all based in the UK. This is a marine domain awareness satellite. There was uh, two CubeSats called Prometheus for the Ministry of Defense. There was two called Circe Coordinated Ionospheric Reconstruction CubeSat Experiment, a joint mission between the UK uh, Defense Science and Technology and the US Naval Research Laboratory. Dover, a small satellite uh, for a you know, navigation system. Forge Star was a Welsh satellite which is supposed to demonstrate on-orbit manufacturing and ultimately be recoverable. In this case, I don't think this is one is being recovered. Stork 6, which is a Polish satellite built by SatRev, part of their Stork constellation. And uh, Aman, which was Oman's first satellite, also built by SatDev out of Poland. So yeah, the launch, as I said, the load all this onto this 30-ton uh, Launcher 1 rocket which runs on kerosene and liquid oxygen, fly it out over the ocean and then during a pull-up maneuver at the appropriate time they drop the rocket, it lights its main engine. Well first of all it fires the propellant settling thrusters which makes sure that the fuel is all sit sitting at the back, then lights the main engine and then the whole thing is able to pull up into uh, an ascent and about a Three minutes into the flight, the first stage burns out, second stage lights, and normally that would then carry it into orbit. But in this case, it, it didn't work. And we're not sure why. There's a lot of theories. But what I have seen, what was observed, was that during the live stream, which was mostly terrible, you guys really need to get your live stream fixed, uh, there was terrible telemetry problems. And that's not the live stream people's problem. That is the fact that they are out over the Atlantic and there's not much in the way of ground communication that's able to deliver the telemetry back. So we actually heard at one point they were switching to Madrid and then they switched to Mas Palomas and they were only getting fragments of the telemetry. For the first few minutes, we did get to see the second stage was functioning correctly, but there was a couple of things that were concerning. First of all, there are a number of people, including myself, that saw this image from the front of the rocket that looked like there was something, potentially a fairing, still attached because it looked like there's this structure with this well-defined line and that looked like a sort of curved thing with a lip and I went and I decided to analyse this just to see because I thought it could also be the planet Earth. <laughs> and so, like, I, I took advantage of the fact that this is a 
static image from a fixed camera and I stacked all the images to produce a better dynamic range and okay it actually looked then like the what was the fairing was moving around so what I then did was I took that segment of the video and stacked every four frame into one and then stretched the contrast a bit and played it back at basically four times normal speed and from that you can see that the thing is moving around like you would expect the planet Earth to move. Not only that, this is what really seals the deal, is there is a star in the same frame and it is moving in concert with the Earth. So that is the Earth, the fairing properly deployed, right? And there was a line in the mission control that said, you know, fairing brake wire has broken. That's normal. What you have is a little wire that when it breaks, you know the fairing you know, locking mechanisms have been detached. Brake wires are a pretty common feature in rockets. So yeah, that's not the problem. One thing the telemetry did seem to show was oxygen levels which were dropping way faster than they should. Although later, we see the numbers go up and down, they go to zero, they come back up, they go higher, they go lower. Um, so it could be that there's a pro there was a problem with the engine. But anyway, yeah, about... Um, about the time where they have some issues communicating and getting the telemetry, they come back out and they talk about the second stage engine cutout. And that was too early. So the engine definitely cut out early. It probably cut out when there was communications issues. From that point onwards, we don't get any velocity information, but we do see the altitude is just falling and falling and falling. And eventually it re-enters uh, and apparently there's a meteor camera that caught it over Lanzarote, so it was caught on re-entry just off the coast of Spain. Um, the best number that we got was um, at about 180 kilometers, the speed was 5,000 meters per second or thereabouts. That is slightly higher and faster than the previous launch, the... Um, Previous launch was straight up, of course, named for the Paula Abdul record. That was out of the US. Um, the highest we saw it got, I guess, was 5.2 kilometers per second, 181 kilometers. So we did get fragments of good telemetry, but it's hard to reconstruct the trajectory from those. So anyway, yeah, the, the LOX levels, they go up and down. This could be a sign that there was a an oxygen leak of some sort. Either the engine was... Well, its mixture was off, it was putting too much oxygen in. That tends to not be very good for engines, they tend to fail sooner. Uh, alternately, it could be there was a bad sensor, and I'm feeling that it's more a bad sensor, uh, rather than a leak, rather than rich oxygen. If it was oxygen rich, that oxygen rich, I think it would damage the rocket and would fail sooner. If there was a propellant leak, we would have probably seen it earlier, but also, if there was a propellant leak, I think what we would find is that the acceleration would increase faster and we would see it overperforming by a significant margin. Because in a kerosene oxygen rocket, the oxygen is actually more of the mass. So if that's burning faster, we would see a much bigger effect on its velocity. And I don't, there's a few fragments of images where we get to see acceleration graphs and it doesn't seem consistent with there being higher performance. So I'm saying I think the readings of the oxygen may have in fact been wrong and it may have shut off at some point due to low oxygen. It's also, yeah, and it's entirely likely that it could be that there was just too much oxygen going through the system and it shut down early, but it's definitely a propellant system problem. Engine shut down early, it never made orbital velocity and it fell back. So this is obviously not good for Virgin. There's, they've had two failures out of like six launches, so it's not too bad, like especially for an early startup doing something that's kind of different. But at this point, Virgin Orbit really are running into financial problems. Back early, you know, last year, they were looking for more funding. And then a couple of months later, they canceled that because the market wasn't ready to give them the cash. They got something like $20 million from Richard Branson, but part of that deal apparently gives him first dibs on all of the company's assets to take back his money. He put a lot of money into the company, although technically he put things like hardware from Virgin Atlantic and things like this. It's not Accounting is always questionable, right? 
Not all investments in Virgin Orbit that are given cash values were actually in the form of cash. <laughs> so there's a lot of room for manipulation of who owns what there. They did get like a whole SPAC thing, which meant that they have something like a, you know, they have a bunch of money on hand, but there's not enough money to carry them through to the summer when they could unlock more money. They need to launch more payloads so that they can actually get income, but they're not going to be launching any more payloads until they figure out what happened here. So they need to you know, fast track this investigation and restore confidence for their customers. So, since this looks like a problem with a rocket rather than a problem that was specific to operating out of the UK. Um, I think there's, I, I look, so I think that Richard Branson really likes to have firsts. You know, he pushed for the launch of Virgin Galactic before, probably before it was actually ready, just so that he could pip uh, New Shepard to the post. I feel that he might find money to keep Virgin Orbit afloat so that they can come back and get that first launch from the UK. That's That would be a motivation. That's the kind of thing that would motivate Richard Branson, who really likes to do cool and interesting stunts. I'm not sure there's any investors out there. I think they might have to get, they might try to figure out a loan mechanic because they technically do have money floating around, but they just can't get at it right now. Uh, I would be very worried for the future of Virgin Orbit. They haven't really managed to carve out the niche. They do have capabilities that other rocket providers don't have, but it doesn't look like there's enough satellites that need those specific capabilities. And with the lack of, um, with this failure, that's not boding well for future customers. So yeah, look, unfortunately it was a failure. I, I do hope that we get to see a, an orbital launch from the UK at some point in the future. So yeah, commiserations all around to everyone that had uh, satellites on there, especially, you know, I saw Forge Star, I saw your little picture with a Welsh flag and the dragon on the side. And unfortunately you won't be breathing fire, but you will be burninated by the atmosphere. Um, yeah, it, it is unfortunate. Space is extraordinarily difficult. You know, engineering is unforgiving when you are dealing with such small margins. I hope that Virgin Orbit pull through this and I hope that they do find their niche. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.